These are the Wayne Lux Mini Laser Engraving Machines. In this sponsored review, we'll be taking a look at two laser machines by Wayne Lux. The K8 Mini Laser Machine 10 Watt version and the C4 Mini Laser Engraving Machine as well as some accessories like the MD-22 mini air purifier and the R1 Rory Roller. These plug-and-play compact engravers offer a complete and affordable laser engraving solution without compromising on performance or safety. So, let's begin! Welcome back to Space Age Tech, where we look at the tech that pushes the limits. We'll begin by unboxing the K8 Mini Engraving Machine. As you can see, the box is pretty sturdy and well packed. It actually has a picture of the device in the front and some specifications in the back. It's definitely geared to be more retail ready, unlike most of the other laser engravers we have seen so far. This might aim to capture a wider range of consumers. Let's take a look at the inside. The first thing we'll see is our trusty user guide and some free testing materials to get started with our engraver. Then we have the Wayne Lux itself. It looks sleek and compact with a black body and transparent blue light protective doors. It has a power button on the side and a USB port on the back. We also see this wheel on the side that is used to adjust the engraving bed up or down depending on the thickness of the material we use. Inside the unit we have a few more accessories. We have our Type-C cable, our L-shaped locator, a marker pen, a brush for cleaning the machine, we also have our power supply. Now let's unbox the Z4. By comparison, this one is a more plain box. The first thing we'll see again is our trusty user guide along with some testing materials. Below this are all our components nicely laid out. Here is our power cable. Although very portable, the Z4 does need to be plugged in. It also comes with a few accessories like a USB cable to connect your machine to your phone or PC. We also have a brush and some markers. And of course, we have some safety glasses. Although the machine comes with a blue light filter shield, safety glasses are always encouraged. Here you can see our protective shield. It has a magnetic design that latches on to the Z4. You'll also notice that it has a vent to one side that attaches to the exhaust fan. This cools the laser and removes dust and smoke during the engraving process. This is our laser engraver. The body is made of aluminum alloy and has this handle for easy transport. The total weight for this unit is 0.68 kilograms or about 1.5 pounds. Next, we have a few accessories that are sold separately. This is our R1 Rotary Roller 360 degrees Y-axis rotation module. It's compatible with many of the Wayne Lux engravers, including the K8 and Z4. It's used to engrave cylindrical objects up to 390 millimeters or 15.35 inches in diameter and 370 millimeters or 14.9 inches in length. Our next accessory is the MD-22 mini purifier for the K8 laser machine. Again, we have a very nice retail ready box. Again, we have our trusty user manual. This is our connector hose. We'll use it to connect the K8 with our air purifier. It uses a twist and lock mechanism to connect the exhaust vent on the K8 
and the other end to the purifier intake, allowing you to work with your KA comfortably at home. And here's our MD-22 mini purifier. There's not really much of an assembly required here. If we open the top lid, we'll see that there's a filter inside. This may need to be replaced from time to time, depending on the usage you give the machine. It's very easy to remove and replace. All right, now that we're all unboxed, let's get ready to test our K8. We've quickly set up the K8 with the MD-22 mini purifier. The whole process takes just under 5 minutes. We simply have to connect the exhaust on the K8 to the flexible duct on the MD-22 mini purifier with the twist and lock mechanism. This engraver has a manual focus. We'll need to adjust the engraving bed to a specific distance from the laser using the dial on the side as you can see here. The fixed focus lever on the side of the laser helps you position the material at the ideal distance. This laser head itself is fixed vertically on the frame so it does not move up or down. Let's turn on our MD-22 mini purifier. We have two buttons. The first one is going to be our on button and the other button, uh, curiously labeled as button, is our speed button. You can see we have three speeds, which is uh, low, medium, and high. The speed you choose will be dependent on the amount of smoke the K8 is generating. The R1 rotary tool connects to the K8 through an internal USB connector. This allows the machine to remain fully enclosed. And here's our final setup. The Wayne Lux K8 is a fully enclosed laser engraver. The one we are looking at today has a 10 watt laser diode and an adjustable Z bed that can accommodate objects up to 130 millimeters by 130 millimeters or 5.2 inches by 5.2 inches and 80 millimeters or 3.14 inches height. The K8 uses a USB cable to connect to your computer or phone. It has its own software called CutLab X, which you can download online from the App Store or Google Play and follow the instructions on the screen. There is also a desktop version of the app. The CutLab X app is free and has a simple and intuitive interface that lets you choose from various engraving modes, such as text, image, drawing, or even QR code. The app will show you a preview of how it will look on the material and how long it will take to engrave. With the app, you can preview the built-in 2 megapixel camera, and did I mention that it's free? The K8 is also compatible with other professional engraving software such as Gerbil or Lightburn, giving you the freedom to use what you're most comfortable with. At this time, however, camera preview is not available in third-party software. Let's take a look at a few more specs before we get started with our testing. This is a 10 watt laser and has a max speed of 15,000 millimeters per minute at 0.01 millimeter precision, promising a one pass cut at eight millimeter or 0.31 inch plywood and 10 millimeter or 0.39 inch pine wood. We have some great safety features as well. Most obviously, it's self-enclosed and self-contained making it fire resistant. The doors you see here have blue light filtering at a rate of 99.7% so you can see the laser without hurting your eyes. Protective goggles are always recommending when operating any laser engraving machine and this is not the exception. Wayne Lux has also added lights on the inside of the box so you can see the engraving progress while it's in use. 
The doors are magnetic and must be fully closed in order for the machine to work. Once the door is open, the machine will stop the current job and resume once it is closed. For some parts of this video, we rigged the system a little bit and allowed the door to be open so you can get a better view of the progress. We highly advise against you doing this for any of your engravings. And with that said, let's start with 1 quarter inch plywood. We'll first run an engraving test to figure out the best settings for our job. We tested the speed at 125 to 250 millimeters per second and 50 to 100% power. We found that at a higher power and lower speed, we get some scorching, but we do have a very nice usable area at 200 millimeters per second to 250 millimeters per second and 50 to 80% power. Now let's try a cutting test on this quarter inch plywood. For this, we tested speeds of one to five millimeters per second and one through five passes at 100% speed. We found that our optimal settings for this material would be around five millimeters and two to three passes. These settings seem to have the least scorching and cleanest cuts. So let's try making something out of plywood. Here we are engraving and cutting earrings. These earrings have about a half inch diameter and I engraved with a Celtic knot design. You can observe that the cutout part fell through, which means we picked very good settings where the laser was able to cut all the way. When the material is still attached to the board, it means we will get some splinter when we try to detach it, and we'll have to do some extra work afterwards to make sure it's smooth. This is a close-up of our earrings. As you can see, we had a pretty good result. However, there is some room for improvement since we experienced some scorching, meaning that the wood got a bit too hot. Fine-tuning our settings will help with that issue. Let's try one more thing on wood. We have this fish shape that we're engraving. This is to give it a contrasting color from its head. Now here's our result. You can see how the body has a different texture and color from the head. For our next material, we'll try quarter inch MDF. Again, we will first try an engraving test. MDF is usually a very nice material to engrave because there are no differences in hardness or color. Let's take a look at our results. You can see that we were successful on all settings from 50 to 100% power and 125 to 250 millimeters per second. However, we have to pick settings where we can get the cleanest engraving, meaning there is minimal scorching on the surrounding areas. In this case, we would be okay to choose anything from 50 to 70% power and 175 to 250 millimeters per second. Let's get started on a Celtic knot engraving. While this is running, we have our air purifier turned on at the lowest speed. We can adjust the speed manually if we start to notice more smoke from the laser engraver. And here are our results for the engraving on MDF. You can see our design clearly and we have no scorching. The shape of the engraving is not quite right as it appears the material was not completely leveled during the engraving. For our next test, let's try quarter inch cork. This material tends to burn at higher power settings, so let's see what we get. The cork engraving test has some promising results. You can see here that we do get some burning on the higher power, lower speed settings, but we have tons of room to work with at around 50 to 60 percent power and 150 to 250 millimeters per second. Cork is not the greatest material to cut 
So let's try our Celtic knot design engraving. So far, the K8 has been doing an excellent job at running pretty quietly. At higher speeds, the air purifier will make more noise, but so far we are impressed with this little desktop engraver. It's quiet and most importantly, we're getting some pretty good results. Here's our Celtic knot. It looks very nice and crisp, and we did not experience any scorching or burning. Now we will try to engrave on 3mm black acrylic. We will try to find the best settings for acrylic by running a test. You can see here we have a wide area to work with. We would probably not do a lower power and higher speed, as it looks a bit more fussy. We will stick to the sharp squares around 80 to 90% power and speeds of 175 to 250 millimeters per second. Let's try making some pendants from this material. For cutting, we will just use the recommended settings for this material and see how it turns out. So far, it's looking good. You can observe the cutout pieces sinking as they get detached from the acrylic sheet, giving us some initial hope that they will turn out great. All right, so here's our final result. As you can see, our pendants turned out great. The design is clear and the cutting is very clean. Usually the fear with this type of material is that it will melt, but we managed to get wonderful results. Now let's try to engrave a stainless steel jar. This machine is not really meant for cutting metal, so we will just be doing an engraving test. These are our results. Some of the best results are around 90 to 100% power and 1 to 2 millimeters per second. So this is a very slow engraving. Let's see if we can capture a whole design. This will take a little while since we chose speeds of 1 to 2 millimeters per second. Let's see our results. They came out super nice. There really are no flaws on this engraving. Let's try a few more materials. Here we have tile and we'll attempt to engrave it. Let's run a test first to figure out the best settings. From what we can see, we have a lot of room to work with. Notice the variation in color as we get to the higher power, lower speed areas. Let's try engraving our Celtic knot design. Here are our results. Although we are excited about these results, perhaps a lower power setting would help us get sharper edges. What do you think? All right, so that was the easy stuff. Now let's try using our rotary tool. For this test, we will use a small semi-opaque glass base. Now, this base does not have a smooth surface and it is not perfectly cylindrical, as we will see in a moment. Notice the keyword here is opaque. In general, diode lasers don't handle clear materials very well, but can work with a lot of tinted acrylic or glass without additional prep. As you can see, we were successfully able to mark the glass but did not make the cleanest engraving. Still, there's a lot of room to work with, with a little bit of fine tuning. Lastly, we will try engraving on a wood feeder on the rotary roller and see what that looks like. Again, you can see that this item is not 100% cylindrical, which would be ideal, so let's see what results we can get. We were not able to get a perfect engraving on this item, Perhaps because it was not quite leveled. With a little bit of fine tuning and perhaps better positioning, we have high hopes of this rotary roller. So we have seen a lot of the K8, but how about our Z4? Let's put it to the test. Here we have our Wayne Lux Z4. We will first try engraving on quarter inch plywood. 
The Z4 is a 4.5 watt, 455 nanometer blue laser and can engrave very fast up to 36,000 millimeters per minute, as you can see here. The Z4 has a small engraving area of 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters or 1.9 inches by 1.9 inches. Perfect for engraving logos or personalizing items. It can also be used vertically or horizontally. The best part is that it's always focused. Since we have this magnetic base, the laser will always be at the optimal distance from the material we are engraving. The Z4 has its own desktop and mobile app. You will have to follow the instructions on the manual to configure them with your engraver. All right, so here are our results for engraving on quarter inch plywood. This is a very nice and clean engraving, pretty neat for this portable laser. Now let's try cutting the plywood. With this laser, we should be able to cut materials such as cardboard, wood, bamboo, leather, acrylic, and fabric depending on its thickness. So let's see how it does with the plywood. Good results all around. We were able to get a clean cut for this circle. Now let's try engraving on cork. And while this is going on, let's talk about safety. The Z4 has two built-in exhaust fans. This prevents fumes from affecting the design and dissipates heat. It has motion protection and overheat monitoring. Automatically shuts down if it detects unexpected motion or if the internal temperature is too high. It also has a horizontal gyroscope, which automatically pauses engraving in the event of a tilting accident. It also has a built-in blue light filter, which reduces harmful blue light coming from the laser, which can affect your eyes. Of course, you are always encouraged to wear safety goggles. And here are our results from the cork. We did get some scorching towards the middle where the lines converge. At a little less power, we should be able to fix that right up. Let's try engraving a chalkboard paper tag. This can be used for gifts around the holiday, custom cardstock, etc. In addition to paper and the materials we have seen so far, the Z4 is able to engrave on fabric, wool, corrugated paper, glass, shell, brick, cement, and ceramics. There's a lot of room for creative applications of this device. And here is our beautiful paper tag. This is just perfect and a very neat idea. Now let's try 3mm acrylic. So far, we're doing great. We have high hopes for this material as well. As you can see, we currently have this machine hooked up to a power cord, but Winlux does have other neat accessories for the C4 that are sold separately. For example, there is a mobile power bank that would allow you to make the C4 wireless, there is also a manual lift frame, which is a stand that you can use to position the laser so you can use a rotary tool or if you're not engraving on a flat surface. And finally, they have a magnetic acrylic folding protection plate to use with a manual lift setup. Lots of options here. And meanwhile, our engraving on acrylic is done. Also a pretty good result on this material. We are super happy with all the results so far. Let's try cutting the acrylic. Although it's not necessarily a high power machine, it is definitely doing very well on a lot of materials. And it's durable. The good news is that Wayne Lux estimates the life of the laser to be more than 10,000 hours. So it should last a very, very long time. These are the results from our acrylic cutout. As you can see, the Z4 was able to handle this wonderfully, giving us a clean cutout of the 3mm acrylic. Now, let's try anodized aluminum. This machine has been fun to work with. It may be a great way for people interested in laser engraving who don't want to commit to a big bulky machine and all the setup and configuration that comes with it to get started. And here are the results from our anodized aluminum. 
Although we were able to mark on this material, the result is quite fuzzy. A lot more testing needs to be fine-tuned for this. Let's try a few more materials. Up next, tile. As you can see from the movement of the laser, there's actually no laser head moving the laser back and forth. Instead, the Z4 uses mirrors to orchestrate the engraving by directing the laser to the appropriate spot. Here are our results on tile. Again, we were able to mark this material, which is encouraging, but more fine tuning is needed to get a sharper engraving. Perhaps we can maximize our design area to get a cleaner engraving. For our last test, we'll try marble and see what results we can get. This is a black marble piece, which should give us more contrast for the laser to engrave. Again, you can see that the material is marked, but not very clearly. The same thing follows from the tile engraving. Fine-tuning the settings and perhaps maximizing the design area would make a better engraving. And that is all for our Z4. What did you think? Before you make a decision, let's review our results. Here are all our test results from our K8. We did quite well on both engraving and cutting quarter inch plywood, and we were able to get clean cutouts for these pendants with our engraved design. For MDF, we had a wide range of settings we could work with, and we were able to engrave on this material very nicely. For acrylics, we had very good results, and we created two very nice pendants without flaws. Cork is always a bit tricky, but we managed to get some wonderful results on this material engraving. For our plywood fish engraving, we also got really good results. We were able to engrave it evenly. We were pleasantly surprised with our aluminum jar. It was by far our favorite result. For tile, we were able to mark the material, but settings do need adjustment as we did not get clean edges. Now, using our rotary roller, we did run into some warping of the design. We believe we need more cylindrical objects and leveling to get a better result. We were definitely happy with what this small and compact engraving machine can do. It is a great option for anyone looking to get started on laser engraving or needing a portable solution. It takes up little space and does a wonderful job. Now for the C4. We were pleasantly surprised with the overall performance. Although this is not a super powerful laser, we were able to pass almost every test. On quarter inch plywood, we were able to both engrave and cut nicely with one pass. We were also able to engrave on cork, although we experience a little bit of scorching. For 3mm acrylic, we were also able to both engrave and make a cutout very well done as well. We also had a test on paper, which was nicely executed. We were happy that it did not burn the paper. But most importantly, it came out perfect. We also tried marble and tile, and although we were able to mark on both materials, the engraving was not very legible, but we are optimistic that a few more tries might do the trick. All in all, we were happy with the performance of the K8. It works very well as a plug and play solution. This would be a great option for somebody starting out in the world of engraving. It's pretty foolproof as far as safety features go. The free app makes it easy to get started without additional commitment to a third-party software. And most importantly, you get good results right off the bat. On the C4, we were actually very impressed by the performance. It really does what it says it does. And if you want an easy, highly mobile laser engraving solution, well, this is it. The limitation, of course, is the work area, but that's what makes it portable. So which would you get? Let us know in the comments. 
We'll have more of this and other amazing technology in our upcoming reviews. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps our channel grow.